The Children's Television Workshop presents Square One TV, show number 159, produced at Unitel Video in New York. some knight challenges you to a duel, figure out how you can meet him halfway instead. Then we would duel before I finish, fellow. I will say the rest. You'll get no more than half of anything this fair day. Lady Diane, we intend to fight a duel of honor. And since you are the court martial, we Sit, sit. I will be glad to referee thee. Mm, 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 mm. We will follow the accepted steps of a duel of honor. Sir Ron's castle is here. Mm. And Sir Mike's castle is here. Mm. Where shall ye meet to duel? He must come to me. No, no to me. me. Why are you? Ah! Very well, sirs. Ye must then meet halfway. Neither one shall walk any further than the other. We must find thee a halfway point that is not only halfway, but direct routes. Mm -hmm. But first, I must show thee the expected weapons ye will use in your duel. Mm -hmm. First, oh. <gasps> the body bender. Oh. Oh. No, uh, too shiny. No, no, no. no. Wait, too shiny. Oh. Mm. Next, oh. <gasps> the bye-bye eraser machine. Oh, 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 it's all right. It's too pink. Yes, right. Mm. Oh. 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 The gum beater. Oh, oh. No, no. Too bad, no toothpaste. Right, no, no, right. no, 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 no toothpaste. Oh, oh, oh. The ouch, oh. ouch sticks. Oh, oh, oh. oh right, we do. Better strike these. Oh, oh. Oh. The overhead smasher. Oh, oh, oh. 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 too bad. Uh, uh, too early, tell us not yet. Right, 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 right. right. Oh. right. My oh. personal favorite. Oh. The nose. Squeezer. They're deadly. Oh. Now, the routes. Halfway to each other are easily determined using the map of the village blocks. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve blocks between thee. Each of thee must cross through the village, and each of thee must then walk six blocks, half of the twelve. This will be most direct. No backtracking or going out of these ways. See, one halfway point is for Sir Mike to walk six blocks this way. One, two, three, four, five, six. And for Sir Ron to walk six blocks this way. Over two and up four. Meeting here. Are ye ready to begin the fight? Thou art eager, no? Uh -huh. Just, Just out, out of curiosity, curiosity. Might, might there be another halfway point? point? Do tell. Arr! Well, it is a handy thing to know. Okay, continuing with knowing, each of you must walk six blocks directly to meet halfway. If thee walks six blocks this way, thee must walk six blocks this way for a meeting point. Or thee must walk six blocks this way and thee will walk six blocks this way, another meeting point. Or thee will walk six blocks this way, and thee will walk six blocks this way, another meeting point. Or thee will walk six blocks this way, and thee will walk six blocks this way, another meeting point. 
Of course, each of thee could ziggeth and zaggeth across the grid many a six block way, but these five meeting points wouldst be the five halfway points. So, we are ready to begin, no? I start. Lady Diane, this is a most handy way of figuring which way is best to meet. Uh, and simple too, eh, Sir Mike? Oh, uh, right, right, oh, verily. Sure, it's, it seems uh, a person could find his way through most villages and cities uh, figuring paths in this way, right? It's most efficient. Aye, aye. Ah, tis true. Well, I'm sure you are both ready to bludge it away on each other. Aye, so lady, let's... what is thy rush? If there be no train to catch, sit, 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 sit. Absoluteth, absoluteth. Now, we don't mind going a bit out of our way in the name of honor, no. right? Well, for example, what about that point there? Now, tell the good Sir Ron and myself other ways. Such enthusiasm. Well, ye could see a pattern before thee. If ye wish to meet halfway, but didn't mind going a bit further. But look. Right. Must I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight blocks, while well, Saron only has one, two, three, four, five, six blocks. Ye could each walk seven blocks, ye this way, and ye this way for another meeting point. Mm. Or oh, look, my good friend, Sir Mike, we could each meet halfway here, me by traveling one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight blocks this way, you by traveling eight blocks this way. Right, or oh, my bestest friend, knight in the whole world, Sir Ron, we could go one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and you could likewise go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Halfway. Excellent. Good, good, Sir Mike. Let's explore this moss honey method of a cup of me. Only half a cup. Aye, you're on the lonely diet. Right, you heard of it, have you? Yes, you look marvelous. Works every time, especially when you really do want to meet halfway. I'm not here. Hello? What? What's that? You've got something I might like? Uh-huh. <laughs> what might that be? A sort of sequence. Well, I'm not really into sequences, but thanks just a sort of number sequence. Uh-huh. Well, I was just on my way to Prague, and I'd like to grab a bite to eat before. Yes, I, I do have a pad and pencil. What's that? Mm -hmm. Write down some consecutive odd numbers starting with one. Okay. One, three. Five, mm -hmm. eleven, done, and thanks for the suggestion. <laughs> what? Starting with the one, add the next odd number to it. Okay, one plus three equals four. Thanks again, you've opened my eyes to a whole host of... What else is four? I don't know. Oh, a square number. Hmm, by golly, you're right. Well, goodbye. And... What? Add the next odd number, okay? One, three, is four, plus five equals nine. Huh? Oh, you're right. It's another square number. Four was two squared. Nine is three squared. What? Add the next odd number. Okay, that would be one, three, is four, this is nine, plus seven is 16. Another square number. Add the next one, okay? One, three, is four, is nine, so nine, 16, plus nine equals 25. Five times five. Who is this anyway? And how long does this number stuff go on? As far as you know, forever. Mm. So let me get this straight. You say the sum of consecutive odd numbers beginning with one is always a square number. What will they think of next? <laughs> yeah, well, thanks. Bye. Joan, guess what? If you add up consecutive odd numbers starting with one, do you know what you'll get? other than a headache, Joan. Do you know what you'll get? I'll give it to you straight. We got a love triangle. I saw you kissing your ex-girlfriend. Oh, you better shape up. I told you over and over, this is the end of the line. Boy, I'm gonna be gone, Pentagon, if you don't shape up. Shape up, you better shape up. Shape up, shape up, shape up. 
You say you're innocent It takes two to rectangle I saw you holding her hand In the back of the school rum bus I want you fair and square How could you fall in her trap resort? Boy, I'm gonna be gone Hexagon if you don't shape up Shape up You better shape up Shape up Shape up, shape up Made a plain to see By my geometry There's been a little change in me You gotta shape up Now here's a demonstration Some visualization You got yourself a hairy situation Baby, shape up Now everyone in our circle Comes up and asks me why We've been semi divided by something over and done I tell them me and your ex Are both wondering who's next We're both gonna be gone After gone till you shape up son Shape up You better shape up Shape up Shape up, shape up Shape up You better shape up Shape up, shape up, shape up. Hey, you guys in television land, go get a pencil and paper and play along with... What do you mean you've lost your voice? <laughs> But you've got to introduce me. The show's about to go on the air. Time again for America's favorite mathematical game show. But who's counting? And here's America's favorite mathematical game show host, the nicest, handsomest guy you'll ever meet, Monte Carlo. <laughs> Too, but who's counting? Before we begin the game, let's meet our contestants. And who might you be? <laughs> well, uh, you know, uh, we might be uh, Fred and Ginger. <laughs> well, welcome to the show, Fred and Ginger. Yeah. No. Well, we're not. Good pass. <laughs> You're not? No, Marty, we're the birds. Huh, 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 huh. I'm big. And I'm Harry. Hey, hey, hey. we're gonna win. No. Wonderful. Now, let's meet your opponents. Who are... <laughs> I am Lord Beaverbrook. And I'm Leave it to Beaverbrook. Well, welcome to the show. Now, you know, all know how to play the game? Yeah! yeah. yeah. No. Oh. Wonderful, but first, let's meet the wheel-spinning ingenue, Amber Jeanette! Yeah. 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 By the way, Amber's mother made her outfit today. Yeah. You all know how to play the game? Here are the rules. We'll choose six digits at random, one at a time. Your job is to make two three-digit numbers. When you're finished, add them up, and whichever team has the largest sum wins a swell, elegant prize. Remember, once you place a digit on your board, you yes. can't move it. No. <laughs> and of course, there will be a bonus prize for the largest possible sum. Right. You folks right. at home, Young and old, get pencil and paper ready so you can play too. Here we go with the first number! Yeah, 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 yeah! Go round! Go round! Yeah, yeah, yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah number one! Round and round she goes! It's a number two! All right, all right, all right! All right. Good spin, yeah. Amber! Come on, Amber! Remember, we're going to have two, three, and she's done! Yeah, yeah, yeah! Go, 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 go! Six! All right, six, yeah, yeah! Way to hustle! All right, yeah! Okay, Amber! Everybody, add up your numbers. By the way, Yo, for those whoa. who want them, we have cumulus calculators. Remember, why fly in the clouds when you can use cumulus? Right. Okay, time's up. Hey. Number, please. 
Monte. Right. Yeah. Good number. One thousand eight hundred thirty-four. Yeah, Sounds pretty good. One thousand eight hundred thirty-four. No. Let's see how the Beaverbrooks did. We have the number five hundred sixty-five. Five hundred sixty-five. Well, looks like the birds won the first round. Now, yeah, 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 Starts with the number nine. We're off to a good start. All right. All right. Nine. The number. Oh, right, 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 right. The number. No. Yeah. Number four. Four. Right, 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 right. Good number. Four is the number. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Oh, what's the name? Eight. Yeah. Number eight. Fourth digit. How many numbers? Come on. Come on. Yeah. That's a lot of numbers. Yeah. Number three. Number three. Right. The fifth digit. Come on. You look wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh. Number six. All right. Wait. Oh boy. Mm. This is exciting. Yeah. Okay, the final number. Come on, three, double. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three. Come on. Yeah. 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 Add up your numbers. Now, by the way, for all of you who've written in to ask if Amber makes her own earrings, yes, it's true. And you can do the same if you get her new book, Ears by Amber. OK, <laughs> let's see what the birds came up with. Hey, all right, all right. Good, good number. Game, man. Good game. Ooh, 1,787. Yo, hustle, yeah, hustle, yeah, yeah, hustle. Yeah, let's yeah. see if the Beaver Brooks can beat that. Beaver Brooks? Oh, dear. I'm afraid my number is 1,310. Well, it looks like the birds win the game. Yeah. Yeah. Now, let's see what the largest sum is. Largest sum is 1,805. Well, yeah. first prize goes to the birds. Oh. All right. A gas-operated tree. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Second prize goes to the beaver brooks. Reusable rocks. Oh. Very nice. <laughs> I've just been informed by the judges that I fail to notice that the birds win a bonus prize for getting the best number in the first round. Well, congratulations to you! Bonus prize today, an autographed picture of yours truly. Congratulations, everybody. And that's it for... here and get a look at this city. Wow. Tall, powerful building. A testament to man's creative power. Yep, big too. I gotta get a shot of this to show the folks back home. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's it. Beautiful. It's beautiful. You know, back home, Everything's so flat, you know, what with the cornfields. But here, wow, hey! I gotta get a shot around the corner here to contrast those mountains with the, uh, the... Ooh, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Where'd the rest of the building go, huh? Where's the, uh, where's the side? Where's the back or, or whatever? I mean, uh, what's going on here? Where do the people live? Hey, 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 hey. What is this? A fake movie set or something? Huh? Huh? What? Is the rest of the city like that? Hey, what's going on here? Uh, this isn't a city. It has no character, no depth. Hey. Hey, Mr. Tour Guide. I, uh, Mr. Tour Guide, yes, you. Uh, the rest of the city is missing, and I want to know what you're going to do about it, pal. Hey. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. 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 The story you are about to see is a fib, but it's short. 
The names are made up, but the problems are real. 9.43 a.m. in Coolin, Los Angeles. Very cool. We were working the day watch out of MathNet. My partner is George Frankly. The boss is Thad Green. The capital of North Dakota is Bismarck. My name is Monday. I'm a mathematician. We were working on the problem of the missing dirt and had come up with some interesting twists. While trying to find out what was important about three dump truck loads of dirt which had been stolen, we learned that the dirt had once belonged to Merle Fish, a man who was in prison for pulling off one of the most spectacular robberies in the annals of crime, the Fink's armored car caper in which he stole one million dollars. The money was never recovered. When you're dealing with a complicated problem, it's a good idea to review your facts and hypotheses. We decided to do just that by looking at a couple of scenes from yesterday's show. Thank you, sir. George, how'd you make out? Did you talk to the warden? Yes, I did, Kate. Can we see Merle Fish? Afraid not. The warden's a powerful man, but he's not that powerful. What do you mean? Merle Fish died in prison six days ago. Morning, George. Morning, Kate. I read the book about the Finks case last night, George. Did you, Kate? I tubed out. You know, watch television. Uh-huh. Watch the rerun of Dragnet. You know, with Jack Webb. Uh-huh. Golly, that was a good show. According to the author Norman Mailbag, Merle Fish had an accomplice. Someone helped him pull off the robbery? Uh-huh. I checked through the police records this morning, and the general consensus is that the accomplice took the money and left the country. Bet he's having a good time. Spending his ill-gotten gains, I mean. Hi, team. I've got a couple of things that might interest you. Shoot. To begin with, the Finks people do have the serial numbers of those stolen bills. Well, that would mean if the robber spent any of the money, the numbers on the bills could be checked and he would get caught. Right. What else have you got, Debbie? I checked the prison records to see what I could find out about Merle Fish. And? He was a strange con. He became a recluse. Hardly ever spoke to anyone. Not prison officials, guards, not even his fellow inmates. And in 21 years, had only one person visit him. One person? Yes. A fellow by the name of Norman Melbag. He's the man that wrote the book about the Finks case. Probably visited Fish to get the facts. Yes, but he continued to visit him long after the book was published. In fact, he saw him just 10 days ago. I don't know why exactly, and maybe he has nothing to do with the missing dirt. But I think we should talk to Mr. Mailbag. I thought you might. Here's his address. I'm Kate Monday. This is my partner, George. Frankly, MathNet. What? What can I do for you? We know you wrote the famous book about the Finks caper. Yes, I did. And that you probably know more about the case than anyone else? I'm sure I do. And we understand that you kept in touch with Merle Fish long after your book was published. Oh, yes. Merle and I became quite close during the interviews that I had with him when I was writing the book. I see. He was a lonely man, and I try to cheer him up from time to time. I wonder, in all the years that you knew him, Mr. Mailbag, did he ever tell you what happened to the money? You didn't read my book. I haven't got to it yet. You know how your reading mounts up? But I did. Well, then you know what really happened to the money. Fish told me the absolute truth, just the way I wrote it. According to your book, he had an accomplice. That's what the police said. And that's what Merle Fish said. And when Fish was arrested, the accomplice took the money and left the country. But if the serial numbers were known, why hasn't any of the money shown up? European banks and South American banks aren't as interested in tracing American dollars as American banks are. No, I'm sure whoever the accomplice was had a wonderful time with that million dollars somewhere. Now, if you will excuse me. One other thing, Mr. Mailbag. You said that Merle Fish told you everything about the Finks case? Yes, and that's why my book has become the definitive treatise on the case. 
Who was Fisher's accomplice? <laughs> well, <laughs> I have to admit that that is one thing that he never did reveal. You going on a trip, Mr. Melbeck? Yes, yes. Uh, time for a short vacation. Well, if you will excuse me. Thank you for your help, mm -hmm. sir. I got a strange feeling about Mailbag, didn't you? A little bit, yeah. He's pretty slick. You know what Scott Fitzgerald said about writers, don't you? What? He said, all writers are liars, which is why what they write is called fiction. That was William Faulkner, but you made your point. Magnetters, I got something for you. I analyzed the soil from Mailbag's shoes. And? There were two types. The predominant soil was a very rich humus, like the kind gardeners plant things in. That would figure. But there were also large traces with the same acidic components as the stolen dirt. Good. I noticed the footprints mailbag shoes were making, and they looked like the ones we saw at the gravel pit. It's a long shot, George. Something else, folks. Guess what Merle Fish did the day after the heist? Went to prison. Nope. They didn't catch him until about a month later. The day after the robbery, he took out a building permit. A building permit for what? To build a carport. That's right. In Tuesday's show, Mrs. Swaggle mentioned the house had a carport. So? So what? That's right. So what? What if he built a carport? That's no crime, especially if he had a building permit. That's true. But it is a pretty strange thing to do right after you've come into a million simoleons. You know, dollars. Wait a minute. What if the accomplice theory is wrong? About the robbery? Yes. What if he didn't have an accomplice? He robbed the armored truck and took the money home. He figured they'd have a record of the loot so he knew he couldn't spend it. What if he intended to keep it until the statute of limitations expired? That's three years. That means if no one is convicted of the crime in that time, the case is closed. And what if he buried the money under the carport and figured to spend it all later? It's an interesting theory, but it's still just a theory. And it's a long way from three dump truck loads of dirt. But wait a minute. If we figure this out, somebody else could have figured, figured it out, too. We're going to do something that requires mentalism. Ooh. Your number starts with one and has a hundred zeros after it. What's your point? Remember Mailbag said he was going on a short vacation? Uh-huh. And did you notice what Mailbag was taking on his short vacation? 100% of Square One TV is a production of the Children's Television Workshop. This program was made possible by grants from the National Science Foundation, the U.S. Department of Education, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, and the Carnegie Corporation of New York. Corporate funding is provided by IBM. At IBM, we believe education is the key to the future. We are pleased to help support Square One TV as an innovative way to introduce young people to the exciting world of mathematics.